Hi, my name is Carol Burnett, and I feel so much love for Conan O'Brien. Oh my God. I I love I mean, we've had so many people give different spins on that top. But I mean this. I really do adore you. I think you're so terrific. I well, I can't handle that. My I don't know if you could see it, but my soul just left my body. <laughs> because I have to tell you something, and we have met before. Oh yes. And you were on my show many times. And every time you were on my show, my, my parents would watch the show and they were proud of me. But and they would watch huge guests come on and go, oh, that was good. That was good. I'll never forget the first time you came on the show. My parents called me and said, how did you get Carol Burnett? (laughs) Because you are in the stratosphere. I'm sure you hear this all the time. But when I was a boy growing up in Brookline, Massachusetts, on Saturday nights, we would all huddle in our living room. And there was one heat vent that had the heat coming out of it. And we would fight to see who got to sit on the heat vent. (laughs) And we would watch that amazing night that of saturday television night that saturday night lineup which was absolutely was um, all in the family yep mash mary tyler moore bob newhart and yeah. us yeah. and you'd watch it and it was just this fireworks display and then my feeling about it was always that the biggest they always save that huge firework for the end you would come on and i would we would all sit there and watch it and i've interviewed you several times i uh have bumped into you in different places i've stalked you (laughs) i've been i've been escorted out of your home (laughs) dressed as the gardener (laughs) but the i'm driving here today and my assistant had to drive me today i said you need to drive me because i just need to think about the fact that i'm going to be seeing carl burnett again um there's so much to talk about and one of the first things i wanted to talk about that we explore a lot on this podcast. We talk a lot about comedy and we talk a lot about where does it come from? And there's this common belief that it has to come from, you need some kind of tragedy. And you of course had some sadness as a child and you went through a lot. Well, you know what I, uh, sadness, whatever. I, I, I actually had kind of a happy childhood did. for the most part. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, my parents, that, that was a problem, but I knew I was loved. Yes. They they uh, were alcoholics. Mm-hmm. And so I was raised by my grandmother. Mm-hmm. We were poor, but everybody in the neighborhood was. Yeah. You know, our rent was, get this, a dollar a day. <laughs> $30 a month was our rent. And we, we, sometimes we barely made that. But uh, we did save our pennies. Mm-hmm. And my grandmother and I, we lived a block north of Hollywood Boulevard. We That's moved right. out uh, from you Texas. You were in Texas, and then you moved, moved to, with your grandmother, and you're to, living. It was, yeah, and we were living in this apartment building. My mother lived down the hall, and my grandmother and I were in one room and with a pull-down Murphy bed, and I slept on the couch. But uh, we would go to, we'd say, as I said, we'd save our pennies, and we'd see maybe four movies a week, or, which would be double features, so that would be eight movies wow. a week. Second run, and they, they, the movies were my salvation. Really? Because I, my fantasy was I would go and I'd see Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland, you know, and these wonderful MGM musicals where they would say, we're going to put on a show. And hey, let's have, put on a show. We're going to put on a show in the barn, and then it's going to go to Broadway, uh-huh. you know. So everything was always upbeat. The bad guys got their just desserts. hmm and no, nothing, when I was growing up in the 40s, was cynical. Right. So I wasn't. And I just had this naive, optimistic quality that, uh, and I think it came from the movies, that everything was going to work out okay. It's what they imprinted on you, yeah, too, I think, yeah. because clearly you were such a shapeshifter in your comedy and all those amazing sketches and in your different performances and movies and I, I believe if at an early age you see you see a wide variety of ways that you can be funny and you're young, it imprints on you. Uh, well, I didn't know I could be funny. I was a nerd in school. 
I wouldn't know a, anything about that. I was a, <laughs> that's, I was you're going to have to help me because that was an incredible jock <laughs> and a that's, real leading man material. That's why we connect. That's why it's exactly. I have a little <laughs> nerd clubhouse you can join. Yeah. No, and uh, I was. I thought I would be a journalist because I was uh, editor of school papers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it never occurred to me to be a performer at all. And so I wanted to go to UCLA to major in journalism. And, but we couldn't afford it. And, but it was funny. I saw myself on campus. I knew it was going to happen. I just didn't know how, right? So my grandma, we lived in this one room and it faced the lobby and there was a pigeonhole mailboxes mm -hmm. for each apartment or mm -hmm. for each room. And ours was there. And I'd look out every morning to see if we had a letter in our little slot. So this one morning, there was a letter, and I, oh, but first, guess what the tuition was that we couldn't afford to go to UCLA? This is going to break my heart, because I'm going to have two kids in college, and it's going to break my heart. <laughs> oh, Tell me what the tuition was. Guess. 1951. Was it $1,000, $2,000? What was it? $43. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need an ATM machine. <laughs> And a time machine. <laughs> $43. Okay. But we couldn't afford it because yeah. our rent was, 30, you know what sure, I'm saying? Sure, sure. So anyway, now I get this letter and I bring it back into my room and it's typewritten to Carol Burnett, 6434 Yucca Street, Hollywood. Oh my God, look at so, you. Okay. You know, with a little three cent stamp on it. I open it up and there was a $50 bill. To this day, I do not know where that came from, but that was my entrance to oh my UCLA. God. That's like a an angel story. Exactly. Yeah. And so I got to go to UCLA, but they did not have a major in journalism. I could take a course and join the Daily Bruin newspaper. So I got the catalog and I'm looking through and it said theater arts English, theater arts theater, theater arts film, theater arts so and I said, theater arts English. Well, I love to write. And I thought, well, I'll major in that and take the playwriting courses and all of that. But when you were a freshman in theater arts, whether you wanted to direct or write or whatever, you had to take an acting course. You had to take scenery building. You mm -hmm. had to take costumes, so forth and so on. So I'm a freshman, and I had to take an acting course. I was terrified. And I had to get up and do a little scene or something. And I remember uh, the scene where it would be a, a hillbilly woman. Mm -hmm. I'm from Texas and Arkansas, so that came easily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I went out and I read this scene and everybody laughed where they should. And I kind of like that feeling yes and uh then after i'd done that then some of the kids asked me if i'd be in a couple of one acts that they wrote they'd put on pretty soon i was starting to do that and getting that kind of response which i had never dreamed i would ever get because had there been a major in journalism mm -hmm. i wouldn't be here talking to you now about all of this well, you screwed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if this is the big prize you get at the end of this incredible story, you made a mistake.